Mirrors from 2008. I highly recommend you check it out. Hey, what's up guys? It's Josh here. Today I want to do a little movie review on a movie called Mirrors from 2008. Now, I had never heard about this movie ever. I was kind of going back through some old lists, trying to uncover kind of like a hidden gem or a movie that I wanted to see that nobody else had seen, and I came across this one. Now, it stars Kiefer Sutherland, who is kind of most famous for being in 24. I did like 24. It was a pretty good show. I didn't watch all of it, but I did appreciate it. Um, apparently, Kiefer Sutherland also did something called The Lost Boys in the 80s, which is supposed to be like a pretty good vampire flick. So apparently he has been in the horror genre a little bit before, but I kind of knew him a little bit from the 24 era. Also, there's not really too many big reviewers who have re reviewed these movies like Jeremy Johns or any of these like top famous people. I jumped into this one without watching a trailer, without reading anything about it. And basically this movie is kind of like just a horror movie centered around mirrors. They're almost trying to get you to be afraid of looking in the mirror and to be honest, I'm a little bit older, so I don't really get afraid of these kinds of things, but they actually have a pretty good amount of tricks that they do with the mirror. They do kind of create a whole, their own little world here that I really appreciate. It seems like they really flushed out a lot of the ideas and a lot of the things that you could do creating another world through mirrors. I could see myself definitely, if I was like maybe 10, 11, 12, seeing this movie, you know, actually being really afraid at looking in the mirror and it kind of, opens your eyes to how often you look in the mirror and if there was an evil that could see you through the mirror how hard it would be to get away from that because mirrors are everywhere like a, the tv is a mirror uh, if you get water on the floor it's a mirror if you're in your car there's mirrors everywhere so it's a whole unique concept i've never heard of this like evil mirror thing Apparently it was a copy of an older movie that involved like evil mirrors, but personally I had never seen anything like it. And to me it felt like a very, very unique idea. This movie has a decent amount of twists, but I think I can describe most, most everything that I want to without giving any spoilers. So this is going to be a spoiler free review, 100%. I really appreciated the world that they created through these mirrors. It starts off with Keeper Sutherland and there's these evil mirrors where he works as a security guard at night. He slowly starts seeing more things and some weird things start happening. And then people start being able to get him through mirrors once he leaves his work. So like him and his family or anybody that he loves could be susceptible to an evil person in a mirror later on. I thought Keeper Sutherland was a really, really good actor here. I think he definitely helped this story out quite a bit. Um, I did really like the relationship between him and Paula Patton because it's this very troubled relationship and I, I like that they, they dance between, you know, this couple's gonna work out like they're meant to be and then all of a sudden Keeper Sutherland just goes off the deep end and gets really angry and you're like, oh man, he's gonna throw it all away. He's just, he deserves to not have his family. But they kind of have this, this fine line of like, oh, he's a good guy, he deserves it. And oh, he's just messing up and throwing it away. I, I liked how they just rode the fine line between liking him and disliking him. For a long time in this movie, Keeper Sutherland is seeing these things in the mirror and obviously people aren't just gonna believe him that he, what he's saying, these evil things in a mirror. So I found that the balance of Keeper Sutherland seeing the evil stuff and the people coming around to believing him was a good, it was a good pace, you know, it was just the right amount of time of people not believing him and then people kind of come along near the end. For me, I hate movies when the one character sees all the evil and then nobody believes them all the way till the end. There's no, whatever they say, nobody believes them. Nobody even gives them a chance that they could, what they could be saying is real. I like when they, like, you can slowly get people on board with what the character is seeing and they do that really, really well here. Some of the, the downsides to this movie, um, there's really not that many. Uh, I do think that it was a little bit over graphic. I mean, the opening scene is just really, really, really nasty and graphic. It involves like a throat slit and it's very, very, very slow, very graphic, kind of nasty. Um, this was, I guess, right around when Saw came out. So the horror movies around this time were very, very graphic. I don't know if they were trying to keep up with that. But really, guys, there's only a couple really gross, you know, aggressive scenes, and they're mainly in the beginning. And this movie could have almost been PG-13 had it not been for a couple of these scenes. Now, there is a, a scene with Amy Smart where that scene was super, super, super intense. I'm not going to reveal any spoilers, but... I actually thought that was probably the most intense scene in the movie, and I do think the Amy Smart scene 
earned the R rating. Like at that point I was like, okay, I would like this scene left alone and to leave it alone, it needs to be R rated. So I see that there. And without giving any spoilers away, there's kind of like a main central monster. It kind of feels kind of like a paranormal movie in the beginning, and I guess technically it is, but it almost turns into a little bit of a monster movie at the end. And I kind of liked that, that it kind of, it was not just the typical paranormal movie where it does the same kind of things. To me, it, it almost has a central theme, a central monster that they're trying to go towards, and I did appreciate that. Another problem they had with this movie, and it's hard for me to describe, but there's not enough like branding in it. Now, the ideas are really unique. All the stuff with the mirrors, I really appreciate it. And for that should be enough, but there's just something about it to where it's, it's really good, but it's just forgettable. It doesn't have this Michael or this Jason or this Annabelle or this, you know, Jason hockey mask or this, this kind of vibe to the movie. It's just like, besides the mirrors and all the great tricks with that, there's just not like a central villain. I mean, even the monster that I'm talking about at the end, they don't do enough to, you know, make this like a famous monster or make this like a, something you're just gonna remember for this person and this kind of scene. It just is unfortunately a slight bit forgettable and I really don't know why. I try to put my finger on like, oh, you know, how could they have branded this a little better? And I really don't know how, to be honest. Also, the ending was a little bit interesting. To me, it kind of, it's kind of a little bit resolved, kind of a little bit unresolved. I just really, I thought that it was a good place to end this movie. Uh, a lot of times with horrors, they leave it on a cliffhanger and I felt like it just got left on the right kind of cliffhanger for me. I did appreciate the ending here. If I were to say bye, try or pass this one, I would say this is a solid try. I almost want to say bye, but there's something that's holding me back from saying it. I do think this is a solid try. Just know that there is a couple really, really excessively gory scenes in the beginning that aren't for every single person. But if you can get past those, this is actually a really, really good movie and I really, really liked it. Again, I'm kind of on the fence between wanting to own this and wanting to just rent this as a suggestion. I would slightly go with rent. And to me, as far as the rating, I was kind of on the fence between a 7.5 to an 8. And it's kind of weird. I was on a 7.5. I liked the ending and I wanted to put it as an 8. But then I was thinking like, ah, this, they don't really have all the branding that I want. I don't know how to describe it, but there's some aspect to it that isn't as memorable as it could be, so I'm gonna put it back down to a 7.5. But to be honest, guys, if you can appreciate aggressive movie, you can appreciate, you know, kind of like a mind-bending type movie, totally check this one out. I was really on board with it. I was surprised it was so good. And if it tuned up a couple things, this movie could have been great. Um, another little thing that I noticed, especially with the excessively gory scenes, was there was just a little hint of CGI in there. When you're watching it, you're like, ah, oh, I think this is like, noticeably older CGI. So those two little things, it being a little bit more gory and starting off a little bit slow, just a little bit slow, those are the little things that held it back. I think if you tuned this one up, this movie could have been a solid eight, 8.5. Really, really good mirror tricks. I liked all the actors in here. I actually saw uh, Paula Patton in one of the old Mission Impossibles and I could not stand her in that. I like Paula Patton a lot in here. I loved her acting. I don't know if it was her and Kiefer Sutherland, their chemistry. It was just good. But Mirrors from 2008, I highly recommend you check it out if you're into this kind of movie. Well, anyways, guys, we're on the road to 50,000 subscribers and I couldn't do it without any of you guys' help. You guys are the best. I'm having a great day out here. Hopefully, I'm having a great day at home. See you all in the next video. Peace.